Hello everybody and welcome back to a lecture series. I'm Ted, your host, and this is going to be the uh, the last of our lectures on um, pre-Columbian native societies. Um, uh, and this is also going to bring a bring to a close our uh, our first part of our world history course. Our, our it's going to end the uh, the first half of our discussion on world uh, history and world cultures. Um, this will center on. Um, uh, Peruvian culture and Peruvian civilization um, after the uh, a a after Shabin culture we're going to look at the immediate predecessors of the Incas as well as the Incas themselves um, in our last lecture we uh, brought to a close our examination of Mesoamerica we looked at the Aztecs um, how they rose uh, and of course their fall we will again revisit that topic when we look at um, the age of discovery and, and of course contact um, we, uh, we, 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 um, we, we went back and we looked at the Toltecs, we looked at the rise, we examined the rise of Tula, the fall of Tula, the myth, uh, surrounding, um, the battle between, um, Quetzalcoatl and the war god, um, we examined the, uh, the rise of Tenochtitlan, uh, the organization of Aztec society and the fact that it was a society under immense stress uh, and, and pressure. Um, the, uh, the sacrifices, the need for prestige, the increase in stratification, uh, stratification of, their, um, of their society, um, the increasing uh, despotic nature of their, of their rulers. Um, a lot of stress, a lot of uh, indicators that all was not well within the, uh, within the Triple Alliance itself. Um, and from there we transition to, uh, events after, um, the rise of Shavian culture. And let me just begin by saying that as the Shavian culture rose and began to dominate other cultures, uh, uh, other cultures began to grow and they began to fuel the formation, uh, the, uh, formation of little states around Lake Titicaca. Now these states appeared at a time when more intensive alpaca and llama herding was occurring. Uh, these these states began to uh, occur. They began to form. Had potato agriculture were beginning to transform the landscape. By 1200 BCE, these polities had developed widespread trading networks, um, which uh, which were predominantly uh, located along the north coast of Peru. The people of Lake Titicaca were beginning to develop woven textiles and irrigation techniques that would later spread to what is now the, uh, the southern coast of Peru. Um, one of the catalysts for this increase uh, for, for this was increased trade was the uh, domestication of the llama. Uh, now the llama, which has limitations how the beast of birding, uh, the llama can really only carry around 30, 35 pounds. Um, but uh but but llama caravans small caravans uh of llamas um and llama herdsmen moving uh trade goods between the andean and the coastal lowlands um really really spurred um the, the spread of organized states of sedentary states and really spread the impact of the um uh, interdependency of these two zones by 450 uh, Tiwanaku on the south coast, uh, on, on the south coast, I'm sorry, uh, on the southern shores of Lake Titicaca was quickly becoming a major population center. It was quickly becoming a major er, um, economic hub and it was quickly becoming the religious focal point of the lake shore, uh, of, the, of the lake shore region of uh, Lake Titicaca. Like Shabin, uh, Tiwanaku developed um, they developed a striking arc style. The rulers of Tiwanaku carved out an empire uh, in the time tried manner of carefully controlling trade uh, trade routes. Um, they carefully controlled the, um, the, uh, the the caravan trade, the llama caravan trade, and they conquered their neighbors and they colonized new sites. Now they were able to do this because of their ability to erect uh, raised fields that were watered by canals uh, that created a mist 
nullifying the threat of frost to the potatoes in the field. Now, this enabled the food surpluses, surpluses that allowed the city to develop the, uh, the strategy to extend its base and gain control over the entire region. Now, this system would eventually fall into disuse after the collapse of Tiwanaku around the year 1000 CE. Tiwanaku, uh, the, the Tiwanaku state collapsed when a severe drought affected their heartland, their, the core land of their empire. Uh, droughts were a regular occurrence for Andean culture. Um, they were affected, uh, they, they also affected moche farming. Uh, many of the institutions endured uh, for centuries. Now, the Inca in particular owed a tremendous debt to the Tiwanakans. They derived social and religious conventions that were modified to fit their needs. Tiwanaku became a religious site. Um, it, it became a major religious site to the uh, to later peoples, in particular to the Incas. Now, at the uh, at the Highland states collapse, the the state of uh, Sikan rose in in place. But Sikan and her neighbors were undone by El Nino flooding. Um, these were very vulnerable. Uh, this area in general was very vulnerable. Um, information was transmitted orally, lifespans were short, and the coastal region was very vulnerable to El Ninos, um, which had the potential to undo the political order without notice. Now, institutional memory, as a result, was short. These were not um, literate people. They did not have uh, any form of writing. Um, as I stated earlier, lifespans were short. Um, information was only orally transmitted. Um, when people forget past events, they, 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 they tend to resurface with a vengeance. Um, for a while, one generation will be able to transmit orally uh, the fact that El Nino storms occur and this is what you do to guard against El Nino storms, this is what you do after El Nino storms. If the members of a generation who had experienced El Nino storms or who had um, orally received this information about the El Nino storm, if their lives ended short, if they, end, if they had tragic ends um, to, to their lives, that information would be passed down. And so the preceding generations would not have that information to fall back on. They would not have that awareness of their environment. Um, without the institutional memory uh, or the institutional ability to pass down that knowledge, it put them in very vulnerable, uh, a very vulnerable position. Um, the, the Chimu state um, became the, the dominant power in that region in the early second millennium, controlling the uh, controlling the coast and creating a multi valley state. Um, that uh, the, the, the Chimu state uh, eventually controls somewhere around twelve river valleys. Um, under under their command, uh, they they had uh, 125 acres of arable land under their command. Um, they embarked on, on what was nothing short of just amazing organization. Uh, they all 125 thousand acres of that land had to be farmed. It had to be farmed by hand. Um, and, and they met the challenge at every level. They met the challenge, and they put in place this amazing organization. Uh, Chimu's rulers were ambitious conquerors. They conquered neighboring valleys, then organized the irrigation schemes uh, there. They built large reservoirs and canals that connected one valley to another. They increased the scale of the agriculture and reduced the vulnerability of the coast to El Nino storms. Um, Chimu grew. Uh, by 1470, uh, Chimu controls something like 620 miles of coastal, uh, of, of coastal Peru, uh, of the coastal strip. All um, in about, uh, in and about uh, around two thirds of all of the irrigated land of the Peruvian coast was under Chimu's control. Um, Chimu became very wealthy, very powerful. Um, uh, had the result of this. Now, the focus of the Chimu state 
with the city of Chan Chan. Uh, and, and Chang Chan is at the mouth of the Moche River. Um, and, and Chang Chan extends for about eight square miles. Um, at the center of the city, there were nine royal structures laid out in a broken rectangle. Now, each ruler of the Chimu built his own compound, which eventually became his tomb and later on his shrine. Uh, there were walls that isolated the ruler from the view uh, of their subjects. And, and of course, uh, the coastal wind. Um, the way they built these structures and maintained them was through the, uh, the Mita. Now, the Mita was a compulsory work tax imposed on the peasantry. Now, through the Mita, the rulers were able to construct roads, um, build their compounds, um, build irrigation canals, and maintain irrigation canals and roads. Um, the royal compounds were richly decorated with a, uh, um, uh, they also featured separate water supplies. Um, they had privacy walls. The rulers lived and died in really almost seclusion. Um, they, they only made appearances at ceremonies. Um, and, and these appearances were carefully rationed. Uh, in addition to the royal compound, the aristocracy, The, uh, the, the Chimo uh, or, or, the, or the Chimu aristocracy, they, they also built their own uh, smaller enclosures. While the, uh, the other workers, and these were mainly Yepi craft workers, they lived in small houses on the western side of the city. Now, Chimu pioneered new communication methods to link um, uh, the, the, the spread out valley together. These uh, communication methods ensured that soldiers, royal officials, um, uh, were able to make their rounds using these roads that they were able to uh, um, gather their subject, po their, their subject populations and have them via the meter um, construct roads and, and, and harness the labor of their subject people to ensure the, the smooth operations of, of the Chimu state. Now the Chimu also resettled uh, conquered people. They, they uh, in a practice that we have seen before, remember the Assyrians. The Assyrians also practiced um, settling subject peoples in far off locations. Uh, and, and the Chimu, they, they, they do the exact same thing. They, uh, they resettled um, conquered peoples far away from their homelands. And this was due to reduce the possibility of uprisings against them. Uh, the later Inca would take this measure, will take up this measure and, and the practice. Um, they would, uh, the Inca would settle people far away from, from their homelands and they would also use the practice of the Mita to maintain um, infrastructure and also to, uh, to, to uh, construct new buildings, new public, um, new, to, uh, to ensure that they had enough labor to meet the cost of new public works. Uh, the Chimu achieved a great degree of sophistication in metalworking. Uh, the, the Chimu really excelled at gold and silver smithing. Um, they were exit. We have some great examples of pottery from them and of course textile production. Now we suspect that this was a uh, a world of split inheritance, meaning that when a ruler died, he got to keep his possessions and his successor had to amass his own fortune. Now Chima was wealthy and there were ample supplies of metals, grade, agricultural produce, and tribute flowing in from all their subject states. Now, this wealth attracted the attention of aggressive neighbors. Uh, Chimu was vulnerable to two things. Drought, which, uh, which though was cyclical, um, uh, still, still uh, had, had a great effect on them. Uh, and, and droughts were cyclical and had a great effect on them. And, and the droughts were mainly fed by the fact that the soil gradually lost fertility due to the rising salinity in, in, uh, in, in the soil. Uh, and the other was flooding. And, uh, and there, were, there, were, uh, there were many ways in which the floods came in to affect Chimu. Um, one uh, was through El Nino's. Um, the uh, El Nino storms brought in uh, tons of seawater and the seawater added to the, uh, the, the seawater is really the source of the salinity. Uh, of the soil, um, soil salinity for, for Chimu agricultural areas. Um, now the hostile neighbors uh, of the Chimu, they all grew envious of, 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 of the Chimu. They all lived upstream of the Chimu. And this was uh, another reason for, uh, for, for Chimu's um, 
uh, for Chimu's downfall. All of their uh, envious enemies lived upstream and they controlled Chimu's water supply. And between 1462 and 1470, the Chimu ruler Min Chan Kaman fought with Inca armies over this issue, over um, uh, Chimu's prosperity and the right to protect Chimu's water supply. Now the Incas were from the highlands and they were based on, um, uh, they were based at the city of Cusco. Now the Inca controlled Chimu's water supply. And in the end, Chimu became part of the Inca empire. The Incas were able to conquer Chimu. Thousands of Chimu artisans were settled at that point at Cusco. Uh, and again, Cusco is high in the Andes mountains. Now the Incas rose from really relative obs obscurity to imperial fame. Um, and, and, they, and they really created their own history, their own backstory as they rose. Now we do know that, that at the time of Tiwanaku's collapse in the 11th century that the Inca were one of many farming communities in the, uh, in the highland valleys of the, of the Andes. Uh, their rulers were petty war chiefs who fought constantly. Uh, these, these rulers, um, but we, don't, we don't know who these rulers were, we don't know how they became conquerors. Um, but, but the Incas created, uh, one reason we don't really know that much about them like that, uh, we don't know too much into their backstory, is that the Incas created their own origin myth. We know, um, we, we know that beginning in the 15th century, the Incan, uh, ruler, Vera, um, v uh, Vera, uh, uh, I'm sorry, really bad pronunciations with, uh, with these guys' names, and I'm sorry for, uh, for the breaks in this. But Vira Chocha, Inca, and, and Inca was the title of the rulers. Uh, Vira, Vira Chocha Inca elevated himself from a mere tribal raider to a conqueror. Uh, this was a new role. Uh, he soon presided over a small kingdom. He proclaimed himself a living god, and he created a new religious cult of Inti. Uh, Inti was a celestial divine ancestor who was associated with the sun. Around 1438, um, Pakakuti became the Inca ruler, and he is saying, uh, and really he assumed the name uh, Pakakuti um, after he after he uh, began his reign. And the name Pakakuti simply means he who remakes the world. And he transformed the Inca domain into a state. Um, it's no longer a petty state or a petty kingdom, but it's a full-fledged kingdom. It's a full-fledged state. His reforms were remarkable, but left fatal flaws in the Inca state. Pakakuti began uh, by fostering a new religious cult, which reinforced continuity with the past. Very important for his people. Uh, at his death, a ruler was mummified, um, but continued to live in his home with all of his possessions. His followers ate with him talk with him and his mummy attended all of the great ceremonies of state. This symbolism was of vital importance uh, and again it was a measure of reassuring continuity with the past. Um, this was a very important measure uh, of, of openly stating the continuity, um, the, the, the uh, traditional pass, um, passing of power and the traditional uh, social roles within Incan life and Incan society. It confirmed the relationship between the royal ancestor and the new royal leader. Now at the succession, uh, succession of a new ruler, the old dead ruler retained his lands, he retained his possessions, his homes, and all the new ruler received was prestige and the title of Inca and nothing much else. This put the onus on the new ruler to acquire his own wealth his own land, and his own goods so that he can live in imperial splendor. All of the early land around Cusco was owned by the early uh, rulers of Cusco. Um, each new supreme Inca had to acquire new royal estates through conquest. They expanded the Inca domain um, through warfare. Uh, they were extremely able rulers. And in or by in or around 1493, the Inca uh, ruler Tupac Inca Yupanque extended Incan rule into Bolivia, Ecuador, and Chile. His armies also conquered Chile, uh, Chimu. 
it was him uh, who, it, it was uh, Inca Tupac, Inca uh, Yupan Kwe, who threatened uh, the water supply of Chimu and brought Chimu to heel. Who uh, was also he who resettled all of those artisans from Chimu in, at, at, uh, at um, Cusco. Now, by the time of the arrival of the Spanish, the Inca extended far to the north into Ecuador uh, and to the eastern tropical forest on the other side of the Andes. Now, this was not as successful for the Inca, who were unaccustomed to fighting in heavily vegetated terrain. Uh, the land of the Four Corners, uh, Tawan Tin Suyu, um, that, that's the land of the Four Corners, that's uh, the, the Inca name for their, for their domain. For their uh, their their state their territory, um, it, it didn't fare well for them. Um, fortunately for the Inca, their rulers were far more than conquerors. They were also charismatic spin doctors who reminded their subjects of the, of the divine status uh, of their of their um, of their own selves, and and that their subject uh, well-being depended on the success of these divine rulers. The uh, the Incas. Uh, and the Incas, not the people, but the Incas uh, had um, referring to their kings, their emperors, the rulers. They were successful and they were very careful um, w uh, in awarding bravery and battle and brought economic opportunity to their newly conquered peoples. Um, and this tied their the, the, the subjects into to the new ruler and the ruler regimes. They were skilled at, tr at, um, at tying rewards with their overlordship. The Incas were also rulers of extraordinary administrative abilities, and they did this without a system of written records, all from Cusco. Cusco, as I stated earlier, is in the Andes and is laid out in a cruciform plan with a central plaza. It is bisected by two rivers. Uh, to the south, Lady uh, Coriancha, the Temple of the Sun. Um, it's really six one room buildings with gold covering walls uh, surrounding a central courtyard. Um, it is really a finely, uh, a closely fitted masonry wall enclosed the, uh, en encloses the, uh, the complexes. And in front of this was a garden of golden plants in front of a shrine with a golden image of the sun. Now, Inca architects were master builders who dug uh, boulders uh, who drug, I should say, boulders to the capital and then shaped them with, uh, with river cobbles. Now, the, uh, the empire was divided into four provinces uh, and ran used uh, and was um, administered using carefully modified institutions like the Mita labor system, the, carefully, uh, the, the careful inventory of, of every communal storehouse, efficient communication bolstered um, the, uh, the sophistication of the, of the state. And again, um, just, just, just to say it, the Incas had access to one of the more sophisticated road systems in the Americas. Um, the efficient communication that, um, that the sophisticated road system all increased the Lama caravan. Uh, the caravans bringing goods from the, uh, the highland Andes regions down to the coastal, uh, regions. Uh, those those little things uh, allow for an increase in trade, which increased our uh, prestige, goods, and wealth. Uh, the Inca divided society into twelve aid divisions, and they did this for sense uh, for census purposes, but also tax purposes. By the early 1500s, the institution of split inheritance had caused uh, so much expansion that the Inca were really running out of places to conquer, uh, and they were really beginning to reel from the logistical problems of split inheritance. Um, it was at this time that a succession of civil wars ravaged, um, ra ravaged their empire. Um, and, and, and it's at that point that Francisco Pizarro was able to, uh, to capture the Supreme Inca and murder him. Uh, and, uh, and with that ended the, uh, the last great native empire in the Americas. Uh, very, very sad note to end on, but we will end there. And when we come back, we will begin part two of our discussion, our examination, our look at world history. I am Ted. Uh, enjoy the break. Uh, it should be, um, yeah, it should be around like two, uh, 
maybe two and a half week break, something like that. But enjoy the break. Uh, there will be there won't be any lectures, but there will. Um, I'm, I'm hoping there will be some uh, some other type of videos or material that I will put out. Um, not not lecture, but maybe fast facts or or maybe just uh, Q and A, something like that. Uh, as always, hit like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys next time for part two of our world history course.